Now the next thing that we are going to do is we are going to connect this currency exchange service to the database. So here what database we will be using? So we will be using S2 database. So if you don't know about S2 database, it's a very simple thing. S2 database is an in-memory database provided by this Spring. What do I mean by in-memory database? There is no any installation for this database. When you start the server, this database will be created and when you stop it, this will be deleted. The advantage of using this database, it is very helpful if you want to test something or if you are making an application like this. How we can configure S2 database in our project? So there is a dependency for it. Go to your currency exchange service and pond.xml and we will be using the JPI that is Java Persistence API which is a library for performing many helpful database operations. Let's see how we can do that. First of all, you will need a data JPI dependency. Name is Spring Boot Starter Data JPI. Now save it. It will download all the dependencies. The other thing we discussed is we want to have a S2 database. So for S2 database, we should define this dependency. The group ID for S2 database is com dot com dot S2 database, and the artifact ID for S2 database is S2. So let's save it once, and it is downloading all the dependencies. Meanwhile, we should count this S2 database in our application dot properties. Uh, S2 database is all with the Spring now. Just we want to say like enable this S2 console now. S2 dot console enabled equals to true and also already available the water log operation that is being performed by this JPA. So for that JPA provides something called Spring dot JPA show SQL. If you give it true, it will print all the queries that are being performed in the backend. Let me stop the server first. Now, you should be a little bit familiar with the JPA. If you are not familiar, then also fine. I will use some annotations and uh, go through it. So, entity, import the entity, Java X persistence. This entity represents the table. When you denote any class name with the entity, it will think that this is the table name and these are the columns of that entity and it will consider the table name as exchange value suppose you want to change the table name you can give the table name as here annotations will be there and at the red table and you can give the table name i want to keep it exchange value itself and the fields in this entity will be considered as a column so id is column from is one column two is one column like that you will be have a multiple column if you are defining entity there it should be a ID associated with that entity. So I'm saying like this ID is the primary key. So I've denoted it as an ID. So in the spring, what happens? Like when I start this application, if it finds an entity somewhere, by default it will create a table in the database that you have configured. Here it is S2 database. It will create a table with name exchange value in the S2 database. If there is other database configured, it will create the table there. So this table will be created when the application starts. Now let's insert some values in this table. How we can insert the values in the table? So there is a fixed pattern for that. So you can go to resource folder and create a new file. And you have to name that file as data.sql. So it will look for a file called data.sql. Whatever the things you will give it in this file, it will initialize. So whatever the things you give here, that will be initialized and inserted into database. Let's say insert into exchange. What is the table name here? Exchange value. Let's copy this one. Insert into exchange value. Now here, this exchange value will be converted to exchange underscore value because this JPA has some libraries which sees that this is an entity and based on the entity name, it converts the table into its own format. That is like this. So we have id comma from comma to comma conversion underscore multiple comma port and the values we will give 1001 comma usd 
comma INR in the conversion multiple let's say 70 and also we want to give a port number by default let's give it a port number of 0 copy this use it two or three times make it 2 make it 3 and euro to INR let's say 112 Australian dollar to INR 25 now save this one and let's try to launch the application once we will launch it on port 8000 first let's see and let's check the console so we have got an exception here that is JDBC SQL syntax exception so table exchange value not found so but you have to read it very carefully like why this error is coming after reading through all the errors i feel like there is some problem with the way we are creating the table so here we have given this from and to so this from is a keyword of sql and if we are using from here then it will give us an error to select a star from and this from is a keyword right and and we have given this as a table name so we cannot give this same table name how we can change this table name sorry we have to change this column name how we can change the column name go here in your entity class and just give at the right column and the column name you should give currency from in the double quotes and at the right column currency to let's save this one and add the same in here as well currency from currency to save the file and run the application once again so this port is already in use let's check it quickly Let me start a port 8001. So you can see here currency exchange service application is started at port 8001, and these are the SQL operations that are performed and it is logged in the console. Now, how we can see the database? So you can see the database just by going to localhost colon 8001 slash h2 console this is the port that your application is running and at the same port this database will be started now these are the basic settings what happens when we keep these default values and click on connect we will not be able to connect this because we have to provide this url in this format that is JDBC H2 MEM test DB. Now click on test connection, it is successful. Now connect it. So you can see that this is the database and this is the exchange value table that uh, got automatically created. And when you run this, select a star from the table, so you will get all these values here. So in this step, what we did, in this step we have created a database and we have initialized some values in this database that we will be using it using the JPA in this application and let's see how we can do that.